Thought for the day. Attachment gives us the illusion of urgency. Attachment from a Buddhist perspective means really exaggeration, or to think that the good is good from its own side, in isolation from the rest of the story. So when we're motivated by attachment, the thing that we want seems absolutely necessary for our happiness. You know it's attachment when you have that agitated certainty that thinks I can only be happy if this happens, if this person's here, or if I acquire that. And this way of thinking completely disempowers ourselves. From a Buddhist perspective, compassion is the wish for all sentient beings to be free from suffering. So what does that mean? Suffering is the obvious physical and mental pain that we all experience, as well as the fact that the happiness we experience is temporary and changes. Freedom refers to our mind's ability to cut those negative habits, as well as develop our positive habits such as kindness, patience, and wisdom to their utmost extent. So compassion is aware of both suffering and freedom, the fact of the pain, as well as the fact of their potentiality. And so holding these two at the same time prevents us from burnout. Also problematic is when we look only at the potential for freedom and jump over the suffering experience to immediately reframe it as a teaching. This is called spiritual bypassing and can make us very inauthentic and plastic. So let's work on cultivating real compassion. Spiritual bypassing happens to us all if we're on any kind of path of transformation. We take the wisdom that we've learned and then we apply it too soon to the pain and suffering in our life and jump over the pain that we're actually experiencing. We take our new training in whatever it is, Buddhism, psychology, any form of mysticism, and then we think, I know how I'm supposed to think about this, and so that must be how I already do think about this, but it's not yet actually the case. And so the thing to do is to remember that there's a gap, there's a time lapse between what we understand intellectually and what we're actually able to integrate emotionally or spiritually into our wisdom mind. Give the so-called outer guru and the inner guru time to collaborate, time for there to be a meeting of minds, so that this amazing wisdom that you've come across becomes what you actually believe and not a pretense. Cats are not embarrassed to ask for what they want. We are. We think it's going to make people not like us. But think of how, when a cat asks for what he wants, it makes us so happy to give it to them. People might feel the same way. Not for the day. Just because it's natural doesn't mean it's necessary. We have all kinds of natural responses, like anger, when things happen during the day. We respond this way out of habit. Are they habits we want to keep? A common analogy for the difference between the mind, primary consciousness, and thoughts and emotions, states of mind, mental factors, is water and fish. This analogy can be useful when thoughts and emotions are distracting or distressing. Thoughts and emotions have more movement and primary consciousness has more clarity and knowing. Instead of pretending that there are no fish, we gently shift focus to the clear water of our primary consciousness, whose very nature is reflective and not agitated. Hi everyone, a wind meditation to go with this windy day and my windbreaker. I thought that we'd just take a minute and think about the way outer wind is like the outer chaos in our life. Something that we don't want, something that can be cold and disturbing, and just feel that before trying to change it. I didn't want it to be chaotic. I didn't want it to be windy. I didn't want it to be cold in my outer life or my inner life. And then take a lesson from the trees all around us who bend instead of break, who are strong enough to be flexible and see if we can bring that idea into our day. Even dance with the change. Try simple observation without labels in quiet moments alone. This can help us ground and reset when emotions feel too true. 
Hi everyone. So I guess it's winter because it's snowing and I was just thinking it's really an amazing time to ask ourselves what needs to be more quiet, what needs to slow down, what needs to just be given space to digest and heal and nourish us from this really difficult year. And as the season change, maybe also our mind is changing and maybe we could allow that change. And so I think if we can kind of be in flow with the transitions of the seasons, maybe it will help us heal and rejuvenate. So anyway, that's the thought for the day. And I'm wishing you all a really happy and rejuvenating and healing winter and lots of love.